This video is going to be a whistle stop tour of exam technique. What this means is I'm not going to go into any specific question types or any topics or anything like that. I'm not deconstructing and building a plan or anything like that. I am just going to go through exactly what it is you do have to do for each type of question that comes up in the exam. There are six question types I'm going to look at, um, which covers all three papers. We're going to look at what they're being asked to do the common misconceptions for each question type, how to structure your answers, and what it is, where the marks come from for each of these question types. Now, if you want some more detailed um, breaking down, planning, and building up of answers, have a look in the specific question type areas. There'll be some videos there with um, for specific questions but this is really just about the technique and what it is each question is asking you to do so the first one we're going to look at is the four and six mark question and this appears on paper one and paper three for crime and education these are short answer questions the type you would do with retrieval practice quizzing um, things like that they're not multiple choice um, but they are straightforward knowledge based questions and you can see here from the um in the marks breakdown that for the four market it is all about the ao1 the knowledge and then in the six mark there's some there's half marks for knowledge and half marks for application and what that means is they are really looking for those um examples in those six markers as well so the four and six markers should take you roughly about 10 to 12 minutes to complete. Now, I would recommend doing these last because if you run out of time on a six marker, it's not as detrimental as running out of time on, say, your 30 markers or your methods in context or anything like that. But remember, you can answer these questions in any order you like. So do what feels most comfortable to you. So as I said, these are um, knowledge based questions. Our key command word here is outline. And what that means is they want you to identify and explain. OK, so that's, the, that's an, just another way of saying identify and explain. And it is simply two sentences, one for the identification and one for the explanation. But it's an opportunity for you to show off your sociological knowledge. OK. Um, and show the examiner you have learnt the sociology. So what is it that you're actually being asked to do in terms of structure? Now, it's suggested that you use bullet points. And the reason for this is it makes it very, very easy for the exam to go, yes, yes, two marks, done, dusted, you've got those marks. By writing in a paragraph, you are then waffling and you're more likely to spend too much time on the question. Just do it as a bullet point, two sentences per bullet point, identify, explain. Just as you can see here in my example, I've identified my factor, which is the hidden cost of certain subjects. And then I've explained what I mean by that using an example of art and the purchase of art supplies. This is two marks. Okay, It's as simple as that. There's no waffle. There's no need to if you can get a sociologist in there and it fits very nicely, then obviously use them. Um, if it asks you for sociologists, definitely use them. But we are looking simply for you to identify and explain in these questions. OK, it's about showing off your sociological knowledge. Now, if we go on to the so let's have a look at the 10 marker without item question. This appears on all papers. Um, but in paper one and paper three is for theory and methods only. And then in paper two, you get one question for each of the topics that you've studied. Now, the thing to remember with theory and methods is if the topic comes up in paper one, it could still come up in paper three. So if you get a research methods question in paper one, you could still get a research methods question in paper three. Um, so you can't just forget about it. 
Um, but the 10 marker without item questions are um, that your command words are to outline and explain. And what this means is that, again, they want you to identify an answer. They want you to explain the answer. So as I've said before, your explanation is about teaching your reader. Your outline is the identification. OK, but the key thing to also remember here is that you're being asked for two. Now, when it comes to the marks, it is not marked five and five. It is banded mark. And if we look at, then at this marks breakdown, you can see again, a majority of your marks comes from your sociological knowledge. You're getting five marks for knowledge. So this is about you showing again, linking to that teaching of your reader, showing them that you know your sociology okay um, and not assuming that people the, the research the the examiner get the right word the examiner knows what you know they probably do because most examiners are teachers but you can't assume that they know and if you don't write it down if you don't show them what you know they don't know you know it and therefore you won't get any marks for it you've got to write and show off this is your opportunity exams are your opportunity to go look at how wonderful i am look at what an amazing sociologist i am and all this knowledge i've accumulated in the last two years so don't hold it back get it out there but make sure it's relevant okay you've then got three marks for application okay and this don't get the right one um is things like using sociologists examples studies things like that you it, as part of your explanation as part of your identification it's a it's showing you've got that wider knowledge so the majority of your marks are going to come from your knowledge and from your application of said knowledge and as you can see there are two marks for um, AO3. Now, what we need to remember here with the AO3 is it's not about the evaluation. So we can kind of cross that one out. It is about the analysis. Okay. And what that means is this is about oops, your chain of reasoning. Okay. And what that is, is the flow of your essay. It's about making sure that your S, your paragraphs read well, that they flow and they're not disjointed and all over, jumbled and all over the place. They actually make sense. And analysis is also about your understanding of the question. OK, have you understood what the question is asking of you? Okay. Particularly if it is a synoptic question where they're combining two areas of, of your course into one particular question. So the two marks that you get, I know I said it's not five and five, but you can kind of roughly put it at one mark per paragraph. Does it flow nicely? Have you understood the question? Does it all make sense? OK, now when it comes to this question um, and in terms of the the structure of it it's only five or six sentences okay it's not a huge amount of writing with no introduction no conclusion go straight into those two paragraphs you'll get no credit and no marks for writing an instruction or conclusion and there's no point doing something if you're not going to get marks for it also, it makes it waffly and then the examiner's got a way through the waffle to try and find appropriate marks. So just stick to it. Be, be very tight in your technique and you'll have a happy examiner. And that's what you want, because happy examiners, if you're on the cusp, might put you up slightly um, rather than thinking, oh, I had to wade through everything to try and find these marks. I'm just going to give them the marks that I've got. OK, 
So the structure of your five or six paragraphs, you've got your identification. Now, as I will say throughout all of this, and I said it with the first set of questions as, as well, turn the question into a sentence. Now, this may seem like a waste of time. It's not. Don't copy out the question. Turn it into a sentence. And this has two purposes to it. One, it makes sure that you are answering the question that has been set and you haven't twisted it and turned it into something it's not or misread it. But also the second thing is it shows the examiner that you are answering the question that you've set and you are answering it directly. You're not jumping around houses or um, waffling away. You are being direct with your answer. So that's the first sentence is the identification of what your answer to the question is. Outline and explain to one, whatever it is, is. OK, so then you're going to do your explanation and this is going to be about three or four sentences. OK, so we're looking here. So this is kind of one sentence. This is three to four sentences where you are teaching the reader about your point. OK, you're explaining it in detail. So that you can again show off. Oh, where's my pen gone? So again, you're showing off that sociological knowledge and you know, everything you have learned over the last two years. Okay. The last part of your paragraph is the link. Now this is where you're squaring the circle, if you like. No, closing the circle, not squaring the circle. Closing the circle. You're linking back showing again with a single it's just again it's one sentence to show that you have understood the question that you're that you're making sure you're answering the question so that will kind of link into that analysis again over here now the application um i've put it at the end because it goes where it fits okay don't try and shoehorn it into any particular area. But as I said, it's those sociologists, those examples, those studies that you have that you can then use um, as illustrative points, contemporary examples, things like that. But put it where it fits naturally. Don't shoehorn it in somewhere where it doesn't fit and feels like a bit of an add on or disjointed in some way, because that's where, again, we're going back to this analysis um, skill. OK, so the common mistakes, evaluating the point. As I said, you don't get any marks for evaluation, so don't do it. There's no point. Um, your, if your points are too similar, you want to make sure they're very distinct and separate, that they're not this. They can't be in any way considered the same thing. OK, assuming knowledge of your reader, show off. You've got the knowledge, use it and not putting in any application. Now, 10 marker without item is relatively straightforward, but it, because it is so straightforward, it's easy to not get the marks as much as it is easy to get the marks. Now, the next question we're going to look at is the one, the 10 marker with item, which is a little bit more complicated and um, which is why we give a little bit more time to it. So you will get a 10 marker with item on every single topic except theory and methods. You will not get a 10 marker with item with theory and methods ever at all. Doesn't exist. OK, um, and it's very similar to the 10 marker without item, except we've got this item element that we've added in. So our command words are applying material from the item or using material from the item. Analyze two. So what you're being told to do here is, as I've put it in bold, use the item explicitly in both your paragraphs. But other than that, it's the same as the 10 mark without item. You're identifying your answer to the question. You're teaching your reader about the point. But you have to use the item in both paragraphs. And we can see this when we look at the marks breakdown over here. So our majority of our marks here, just slightly, 
come from the application. Okay, and that is not just about the other forms of application that um, we do. So we still want to use those sociologists, those examples, studies, key terminology and things like that. But the explicit application of the item. And you'll also notice there's slightly more marks here for um, AO3. But again, just to be clear, this is not about evaluation. We're going to take that out. OK, it is about analysis. So it's your analysis of the item. And again, that chain of reasoning. And understanding of the question. OK, so the analysis here is a little bit more marks because what we want to see is that you have used the item appropriately and the item isn't going to be um, comprehension. Might, might be, but in general, it's not comprehension. It is inference and it is getting you to um, possibly try um, and twist the item a little bit to, to fit the point that you're trying to make. So what we're doing here, when we talk about use of the item explicitly, um, so we're looking here, you need to make sure that you use the phrase the item. If we don't see the phrase the item, um, then you're not going to get credit from using as for using the item. You've got to be you've got to show the examiner that is what you're doing. I am taking this information from the item. So it could be the item says, the item suggests, the item indicates, the item states. But that phrase, the item, is what is going to tell the examiner that you have taken information from the item. And if I, you don't see that, zero marks, because there's no indication that you've used the item. I also suggest paraphrasing rather than quoting, because again, that's going to link in with that analysis in it because you're incorporating the item into your, into your answer. You're not just plonking in a quote or adding it in at the end as an afterthought. You've actually analysed the quote, uh, analysed the item and built it in. So your chain of reasoning still flows quite nicely. OK, so paraphrase and integrate. Don't just chuck it in as an add on. The other thing to remember is you need to use different elements of the item for each paragraph. You can't use the same element of the item twice. OK. So our structure, very much like the 10 marker, again, we're looking for five to six sentences. Identify your answer, explain it to the reader by teaching it, link it back at the end. But your application is more important here because it part of that has to come from the item as well as any other application, not instead of any other application, but as well as. OK, so we're still looking for those sociologists, those examples, studies, etc. But the item must be in your answer somewhere. So common mistakes, not using the item explicitly um, or not using it at all. If you do this, zero marks. Doesn't matter how good your paragraph is, you will get no credit for it because the question clearly states using material from the item. So if you don't use material from the item, you haven't answered the question. You've not done what the question has asked you. Um, again, evaluating, you're not going to get any credit for it, so no need to do it. And points being too similar, assuming knowledge of the reader and lacking any other application will all um, reduce the amount of marks that you can be given. OK, so again, it's not overly complicated, but the area that with this question that students struggle with is remembering to use the item. It has to be used. It is clearly stated in the, the um, question that you're using or applying material from the item. And 
it has to be explicit so as i've said before and i'm going to keep saying it i want i would want to see those two words the item to show me you're taking information from the item okay so next up we've got our essay questions so essays make up just over or just under 60 percent of your exam papers okay they're on every single paper on paper one you get a 30 marker on paper two you have two 20 markers and on paper three you get 30 and a 20 okay now there are two types of essays there's the argument essay and there's the relative importance essay argument essays come up around 80 to 85 percent of the time um, which is why i'm going to deal with that first and then your relative importance comes up about 15 to 20 percent of the time okay now the 20 markers and the 20 marks or 30 marks they are answered in the same way okay the difference is how many points you need to make so for a 20 marker we're looking for three and for a 30 marker we're looking for four main body paragraphs so that is the biggest difference between the two essays the 20 marker and the 30 marker the mark scheme is word for word the exam okay all they've done is change the numbers so it's not that big a deal jumping from the 20 markers you do in year 12 in or uh, in the topics to the 30 markers that you do in education and crime in terms of timing 20 markers we suggest around 25 20 to 25 minutes and around 35 to 40 minutes for a 30 marker so i would always argue or always suggest get these done first get them out of the way that way you won't run out of time when completing them they are banded marks so if you don't have enough points you will limit which band you can put your answer your answer will fall into but again if we're looking at the marks breakdown a majority of marks do come from your knowledge so again it's showing off that sociological knowledge showing off what you know what you have learned okay you've then got equal marks for application and evaluation analysis okay now for these questions evaluation is part of the process okay it's even in the question okay okay so applying material evaluate essay questions will always start with evaluate okay even the methods and context one does but we'll come on to that in a second but what this what this means is evaluate means show both sides of the argument and come to a conclusion okay a discuss question would be just showing both sides that's what was what you do at gcse but at a level you the important thing to remember is this bit the coming to a conclusion okay you have to have the definitive answer okay you cannot sit on the fence okay fence is electrified barbed wire and on fire you can't sit on it you've got to have an answer okay now the question also states that you have to apply material from the item so again using the item explicitly just like we did with the 10 marker i'm looking for the terms the item i'm looking for um, paraphrasing and analysis of the item but in this one you for an essay you only need to do it in at least one paragraph so there should be one paragraph with the item one paragraph without the item because you need to use your own knowledge the other paragraphs completely up to you some items will give you loads to work with some will be very difficult to work with um, but you have to use the item in at least one paragraph so how do we know when it's an argument essay so this is what i mean when i talk about evaluation stems these are the parts of the question which tell you 
which type of evaluation you need to do, whether it's an argument or whether it's a relative importance. Now, the exam board are relatively nice in the fact that they have these four um, stems that they use and they don't really vary from them that much, if at all. So evaluate the view, evaluate the claim, evaluate the contribution of, evaluate the usefulness of. Now, with a theories question or a perspectives question, they may ask, evaluate functionalist view of society. Now, that's just another way of saying evaluate the usefulness just without the word usefulness. OK, so when you're looking at the question, identify that evaluation stem. Make it so that you know exactly what type of evaluation you are going to have to do for this particular question. OK, um, and the big thing here is and I, I can't reiterate this enough, is having that definitive answer. Now, one of the ways that you can do that to make sure that you give that definitive answer is turn the argument essay binary. Turn it from a applied material and using your own knowledge, evaluate the view that blah, blah, blah. Turn it into a yes, no question. OK, so these this is what we refer to as a or I refer to as a binary question. OK, a yes, no question. And you need to make sure you are one side or the other. You are either yes or no. OK, it's either useful or it's not useful. You agree with the view or you don't agree with the view. If it contributes, it doesn't contribute. You agree with the claim, you disagree with the claim. OK, you cannot be on the fence. It's electrified barbed wire and on fire. You have to have yes or no answer. So by turning the question binary, write, rewrite the question on your paper in a binary format will help you have that definitive answer. So let's look then at the structure for an argument essay. Now, as I said, it is an essay. So we are looking for an introduction. Now, I use the CCA format for introductions. So context is your kind of opening salvo, your opening line of your essay to show the examiner you know what you are talking about and what you're being asked about. There are three types of context, background, definition or trend. Depending on what the topic of the question is, depends on which type of context you would use. Background tends to be for theories and perspectives, um, definitions for sociological terminology that a non-sociologist wouldn't know the meaning of, and trends or anything statistical. But these opening two sentences, and it is just two sentences, just show the examiner that you know what you're being asked about and what it is that you need to do. Because this is an argument essay, we are then looking at the arguments for and against. So we need to show the examiner that we know what those arguments are. And it is just identification. OK, it is not any explanation, just identify so that you show the examiner. I've looked at both sides. Here are some arguments for, here are some arguments against before you do the really important thing of giving a clear answer to the question and again use the terms of the question turn that question into a statement so that way you can clearly show that you are answering the question that has been set so main body paragraphs as i said for a 20 marker uh, we want three main body for a 30 marker we want four okay but they follow the same structure and i use the, the acronym of webble or web L. OK, so to start with your why, why have you come to your answer? Give me a reason, not just a concept or an idea. Give me a reason. Why do you think this view is inaccurate or why is this view accurate? Why is it useful? Why is it not useful? So we were not looking for concepts or ideas here. We're looking for reasons. OK, 
So we're looking for reasons why. Okay, And a good way to make sure that you do that is, again, turning that binary question into a statement. Functionalism is useful in understanding society because. Functionalism is not useful in understanding society because. And you can use that same sentence starter every single paragraph. Doesn't matter. But it has to be a reason, not a concept, not a theory, not an idea. Sometimes they do overlap. But if you're just going to say functionalism is useful because um, it um, because of Durkheim, that's not a reason why. Or crime and deviant uh, functionalism is useful in understanding crime and deviance because of bond theory. It's not a reason why. Crime and deviance is useful in understanding why people do not commit crime. This is explained through bond theory. So your concepts and your ideas go into the next part, the explanation. OK, and again, we're teaching the reader. So this is where our concepts, ideas, terminology, sociologists, all of those things come into play. OK not necessarily in the why. So our why is just going to be one sentence. Explanation is going to be three or four. And then we've got the but. OK, now I've used but, but some people use evaluation. OK, or criticism. OK, and this needs to link directly to your point. OK, so you're not evaluating the topic. You are evaluating the why, the reason. OK, and this should be shorter than your um, explanation, your, your, yeah, your explanation. If your evaluation is longer than your explanation, it should be the other way around. OK. So this is where I use but because it's just too many E's gets confusing. So this way it's a little bit clearer. Why explain but? And again, we've got our link just to kind of round out the paragraph, bring it back to the answer that we have given. Now, again, you'll notice I've put the application separate down here. Okay. And the reason for that is, again, it's going to go where it fits. OK, if you try and put it after the explanation, it could be part of the explanation. It could be part of the um, reason. It could be part of the evaluation. It doesn't matter where it is as long as you have it and you must have it. OK, every paragraph needs application. And that can be in the form of sociologists, studies, contemporary examples, illustrative examples, the item. All of those would give you the application. So it's got to be in there somewhere. But put it where it fits so that way you still get that chain of reasoning for your analysis. OK, so we want three or four paragraphs of about five or six sentences. So one sentence for your why, three to four for your explanation, two to three for your um, evaluation, one for your link. OK, so you know, maybe six or seven sentences. Again, you are limited on time. Keep it tight. Keep it to the point. Lack of waffle. And you're still going to get the marks. But you need to show off that sociological knowledge. Now, your conclusion is only going to be about three sentences long. OK, you're simply going to restate your answer and that should match. The answer that you gave you in the introduction. So whatever you say in the introduction, that should flow through your essay and still be in your conclusion as well. And then as well, then you just want to give reasons why you've come to that answer don't give the you don't have to give the evaluation points just give the reasons that you've come to your answer you want to make it clear this is my answer to the question you're ramming the answer down the examiner's throat you're convincing them that you are right 
okay your answer to this question is correct okay you've just got to convince them and pr prove it to them so essay writing in sociology is quite persuasive writing okay So let's look at the other type of essay. So this is a relative importance essay. So in terms of where you find it, it's exactly the same as the argument essay. They come up a little less frequently, um, but they're still asking you to do the same thing. They're still asking you to um, apply material and evaluate. So you're still being asked to look at multiple outside both sides of the argument or both or multiple arguments and come to a conclusion. However, with this question, instead of being binary, we're going for a singular. OK, a singular answer. So this is why in our main body paragraphs we have what instead of why. But I'll come back to that in a minute. So for a relative importance question we know it's a relative importance question because again we get given the stems of sociological explanations of so this is generally going to be theory okay or causes factors reasons for this tends to be and not exclusively but tends to be more stat types statistics type um questions so divorce um differential educational achievement uh crime stats things like that would be more relative importance okay but what you're being asked to do in this question is say which one is the best which theory is the best which cause reason or factor is the best at explaining whatever social phenomena has come up in the question okay but again, as we've said before, you can't sit on the fence. It's electrified barbed wire and on fire. You have to give a definitive answer. And in this case, it's a singular answer you're being asked for. What is the best? What is the most important? OK, um, again, we still need to use the item because it tells us that we have to use the item in at least one paragraph. And again, it's got to be explicit. Um, but in terms of our structure on this one, um, just change color. it's context, it's more CIA, um, which might be easier to answer. Your context is going to be the same. It's either going to be background, definition or trend. But instead of arguments for and against, you're just going to identify the points that you are going to make. OK, so what are the theories that you're going to discuss? What are the causes, reasons, factors that you're going to discuss? And it is identification only. There is no explanation in your introduction. That is what the main body of your essay is for. So in your introduction, just say some of the reasons for the causes in divorce are changes in law, change in role of women and uh, secularization. OK, keep it simple, keep it direct and then answer your question. But the most important factor in the court, the recourses of the trends in divorce is um, changing attitudes towards marriage. OK, keep it straightforward, keep it to the point, turn the question into a statement, make sure you are answering it definitively and clearly. OK, the fence is electrified by wire and on fire, you cannot sit on it. The main body paragraphs are the same, similar to what you've done in the argument essays but instead of a why we have what so what is the factor reason that you've identified in your introduction that you are now going to explain and again turn the question into a statement one reason for the trends one cause of the trends in divorce is the changing role of women one theory of gender differences in crime and deviance is chivalry thesis OK, turn the question into a statement. It shows the examiner you are answering the question that has been set. You are not answering a question that you have twisted it into. OK, you then got your explanation. And again, teach your reader. 
show off that sociological knowledge, convince your reader you are right. OK. The, the evaluation here is, again, a criticism of the point of the theory that you or reason or factor that you've given. OK, so um, one reason for the causes and differences in gender and um, crime is the chivalry thesis. However, this can be criticised because gen there are now more women within the criminal justice system. Something along those lines, obviously better explained and not quite as vague as I've just said. OK, but oh, I've done that. Um, with the relative importance question, the evaluation, uh, sorry, the link is a lot more important. This is where you show the relative importance. OK, this is where you are going to explain why this factor is the most important or why it's not the most important why it is the best or why it's not. So whereas the link on an argument essay is just kind of closing the circle on the paragraph, in a relative importance question, the, the link here actually goes into AO3. Okay, it's part of your analysis and your evaluation. Okay, so it's a lot more important to get that link in on a relative importance question. But again, um, as you can see, my application um, is separate. Same as with the relative, with the argument essay, put it where it fits. Use the item where it fits. Use your sociologist, your key terms, your, soci your studies, contemporary and illustrative examples, but put it where it fits so your chain of reasoning flows. Okay. And a conclusion still the same again, restate your answer, but making sure it links back to your introduction and give your reasons. And again, just identify your reasons. No need to explain because you've already done that in the essay. OK, so the relative importance question is a what? rather than a why, but it still needs to have that definitive answer. You still need to give the same number of points, but where people fall down is they forget the, the, the relative importance element of it, the bit that links to the link. It's probably the wrong word to use, but never mind. Um, they, people forget to use the item, don't use an introduction or conclusion, but remember that this has a singular answer. Now the last question I'm going to look at. So now let's look at the last question type that can come up, which is the methods in context question. Now this only appears on paper one and it's worth 20 marks. I'll show you about 25 to 30 minutes. Um, now, a lot of students really dislike this question. I love it. I really like this question. But then again, I'm a bit weird. Um, and I like this question because it's what we refer to as a synoptic question. OK, and what that means is. That it is a question that is combining two areas of the specifications, combining the research methods. With education. OK. And although the uh, command words are still the same, there are still apply material and evaluate. With this question, what you're actually being asked to do is evaluate a research proposal. So what the question is suggesting, despite how it's written, uh, is they're saying, I want to study a particular area of education and I want to use this research method. Is it a good idea? So we still need to give that definitive answer. We still need to give the yes, no, yes or no answer. Okay. Either it is a good method or it's not. Um, but rather than kind of 
it, it, we're not being asked about an argument here. We're being asked to evaluate a particular area of education. If we look at the marks breakdown, a majority of marks are evenly split between knowledge and application. So they're looking at how you apply your knowledge of research methods to an area of education. Okay. Now you do still get marks for your analysis and evaluation. You can't avoid those. Um, and I'll talk about how you show your evaluation later. But your main marks here are coming from your knowledge and your ability to apply your knowledge to a particular scenario. In this case, a research proposal. So we're going to when we look at this question and I do recommend going and having a look at the videos in the methods in context section where I take you through specifically a re re uh, methods in context question, breaking it down and how to put it all together. This is just, a, as I said, a whistle stop tour overview. Um, but what you're being asked to do with the area of education is to identify what are referred to as research considerations, sometimes known as research issues. So this is just about the area of education. So the research consideration, these are just about education. OK, or the topic of the study. So these are the issues that a researcher will need to consider when looking at a particular area of education. What problems before they even consider the um, area, the um, research method, what issues, what problems may they come across when trying to study this particular area of education? Now, there are 10 research considerations that you need to look at, and these can all be found in the um, research methods in context section of the site and um, the, the study books. Um, but what you, you need to then do is kind of go, well, these are the issues. Does this research method help or hinder? Hang on. Okay. Does this research method help or hinder? Does it help overcome um, the problem or doesn't it? OK, so with this particular essay, it is structured differently to the other essays that you have done. The first difference is in the introduction. It's a lot more kind of chunky. So the first thing, the first two bullet points, the context of education and the identification of the research considerations, these are specific about the area of education. OK. The context for the research method and the strengths and limitations, that is about as you guessed it, the research method. OK, so we kind of need to break it down into two sections to begin with the area of education and then the research method. So our focus is on the area of education and then we're applying the research method to it. OK, not the other way around. Focus on the area of education and then apply the research method to it. Now we do have to, as I said, we need to come to that definitive answer, which is yes or no. Does this research method help? Oh, uh, is this research method good for studying this area of education or not? The next big difference is with the main body paragraphs. Now, previously we've done um, integrated paragraphs where our evaluation is in the paragraph. Not so with the methods in context. For this question, we want two paragraphs for your answer and one paragraph against. OK, so this is where we're showing our evaluation by having two paragraphs for our answer and one paragraph against. So if we're arguing that the research method is a good method for this area of education, we're going to have two paragraphs that say, yes, it's good and why? And we're going to have one paragraph saying it's not good and why? That's because no research method is 
perfect. There's, ne there's always going to be an issue with using a particular research method. OK, so again, that first part of. Um, oops, thank you. Um, our paragraph. So the first two bullet points, identifying the research consideration and explaining why it applies to the area of education. That is just about the ed, the education. And then we then apply the research method to the area of education. Oops, I don't mean to do that. OK, so that's the RM. OK, but this bit, this bit here is also evaluation. OK, so what we're doing is we're identifying our research consideration. So what is the issue that a research needs to consider it? Why does they why do they need to consider it? Does the research method overcome this issue or not? How does it overcome it or not? So this is where you're going to bring in your strengths and limitations. Or strengths and weaknesses of the research method. Um, and then we've still got our link. to kind of bring it all together, okay? To restate the answer, okay? Okay, so you're linking back to the answer. Um, again, we still need to have our application and this is something that students often forget in this question. And again, um, you've got to use the item so, so in the question, but put it where it fits. OK, and you do still can use your sociologist studies, contemporary example, illustrative examples and things like that. Each paragraph does need application, but put it where it fits. OK, our conclusion then stays exactly the same. We're going to restate our answer um, and give the reasons for it. Remembering that we are not going to put any new information in our introduction, in our conclusion. If you haven't mentioned it in the main body of your essay, don't put it into your conclusion. OK, but if we look at then the common mistakes, one of the common ones that people make is offering alternatives to the method. You're not asked to do that. You are not asked, is this method any good? If not, what would be better? You're just being asked to focus on a specific research methods so stay focused on that you're not going to lose marks for doing this but you're not going to gain anything from it either so there's no point in doing something you're not going to get any marks for the other big um big one is the focus on the research method rather than the area of education okay don't do that it turns it into a research methods question a theory and methods question you're not going to get above band three if you do that. Start with the area of education, then apply the research method to it, not the other way round. Now, as I said, there's a lot more um, detail in the videos that are in the specific sections of the website. This was just a very quick one hour whistle stop tour on those six types of um, exam questions just to give you some hints and tips on what you need to do.